Could the U.S. lose its entire aircraft carrier fleet in just 20 minutes? That's the chilling scenario raised by U.S. Defense Secretary Pete Hegseth, pointing to China's rapidly advancing hypersonic missile arsenal. With real-world missile tests, full-scale U.S. ship mock-ups in the desert, and long-range systems like the DF-17 and DF-27, China isn't just preparing for war, it's rewriting the rules. In this video, we break down the facts, the firepower, and what this shocking claim really means for the future of naval dominance. China's rise as a missile superpower is no longer theoretical, it's being proven in plain sight. The People's Liberation Army, PLA, has poured resources into developing precision long-range strike weapons, especially those capable of targeting large naval assets like U.S. aircraft carriers. Among the most notable are the DF-21D, DF-26, DF-17, and the more recently revealed DF-27, each of which is reshaping military strategy in the Pacific. The DF-21D, often labeled the world's first carrier killer, is a medium-range ballistic missile with a 2,000 km reach. What sets it apart is its terminal guidance system that enables mid-air corrections, improving accuracy against moving naval targets. Then came the DF-26, which pushes the threat even further with a reported range of over 4,000 km and the ability to carry either conventional or nuclear warheads. It's been nicknamed the Guam Killer for a reason, it puts American bases deep in the Pacific within striking range. But the game changer is the DF-17. This missile carries a hypersonic glide vehicle, HGV, capable of speeds around Mach 10 and, more importantly, high maneuverability. Unlike traditional ballistic trajectories, the DF-17's wave-riding warhead can shift direction mid-flight, making it extremely hard for current missile defense systems to intercept. A 2021 Pentagon report acknowledged the DF-17 as a critical threat, especially if launched in a swarm attack scenario. Now enter the DF-27, which may extend the range to 8,000 kilometers, covering nearly all U.S. bases in the Indo-Pacific. First revealed through satellite intelligence and parade footage in 2023, this missile reportedly supports both anti-ship and land attack capabilities. Military analysts believe it can carry nuclear warheads and hypersonic glide vehicles offering both deterrence and offensive punch. To support the practical application of these systems, China has constructed full-scale mock-ups of U.S. Navy ships, including the USS Gerald R. Ford in the Taklamakan Desert. These aren't propaganda stunts. They're testing sites for missile accuracy, satellite coordination, and strike simulations. Satellite photos taken by Maxer Technologies and Planet Labs confirm repeated updates and structural changes to these mock-ups suggesting ongoing weapons trials. Aircraft carriers are the crown jewels of U.S. naval power, but also its most vulnerable assets. With hypersonic missiles like the DF-17 and DF-27 in China's arsenal, military planners are seriously reconsidering the assumption that carrier groups can operate freely near contested regions like the Taiwan Strait or South China Sea. Still, Let's clarify what it takes actually to sink a modern U.S. aircraft carrier. The USS Gerald R. Ford, for instance, has over 100,000 tons of steel and layered armor, along with compartmentalized internal structures designed to absorb and isolate damage. It shocked trials in 2021, and it remained fully operational. These ships are not easily taken down by a single hit. Moreover, carriers never travel alone. They are the centerpiece of carrier strike groups that include destroyers, cruisers, submarines, and electronic warfare support. These vessels act as both shield and sword, offering Aegis-based missile defense systems, radar jamming, and early warning layers that complicate any attacker's targeting solutions. So while China's missiles can travel fast and hit hard, actually penetrating this layered defense is no easy task. The key variable is mass and coordination. If China launches dozens, or even hundreds of, of missiles simultaneously in a swarm, some may break through. But even then, it would likely take multiple direct hits to completely incapacitate or sink a carrier. Then there's the issue of geography. Critics of Hexeth's 20-minute claim point out that the U.S. does not cluster all 11 carriers in one location, let alone an easy striking distance of China. Even during conflict, it's improbable that more than two or three carriers would be exposed at once. 
that makes a total fleet wipeout not just difficult, but logistically impossible. Finally, technology works both ways. The U.S. is investing billions in hypersonic defenses, including the Glide Phase Interceptor, GPI, program, and laser-based systems. So, while China's advancements are real and concerning, the idea of sinking all U.S. carriers in 20 minutes belongs more to the realm of strategic signaling than operational reality. At its core, this arms race isn't just about the ability to strike ships, it's about redefining the balance of power across the Pacific. China's development of hypersonic missiles serves a dual purpose, not only to expand its offensive reach, but to send a clear signal to the United States and its allies that the days of uncontested naval presence near Chinese waters are over. The message is blunt, any attempt at encroachment will be met with overwhelming force. This ambition aligns closely with Beijing's broader anti-access slash area denial, or A2 slash AD, strategy. The goal is to deter U.S. intervention in flashpoints like Taiwan and the South China Sea by raising the operational risk so high that even the most powerful navy would hesitate. The more confident China becomes in its ability to hold American carriers at risk, the more strategic leverage it gains, not only on the battlefield but at the negotiating table. To enforce this strategy, China's military expansion has gone far beyond hypersonic missiles. It is actively building a multi-layered warfighting network that includes long-range drones equipped for real-time targeting, constellations of satellites capable of tracking naval movements across vast ocean distances, high-speed underwater torpedoes that use supercavitation technology, and intelligent sea mines that can be activated remotely. These elements are not isolated. They are connected within what military planners call a kill chain, a coordinated system of land, sea, air, cyber, and space-based assets designed to rapidly locate and neutralize high-value enemy targets. Analysts in China suggest this kill chain is now advanced enough to coordinate a full strike just minutes after confirming a satellite lock. However, the battlefield isn't limited to weapons. This is also an information war. Pete Hexeth's headline-grabbing comments along with the media frenzy they triggered, serve another function entirely, rallying domestic support for increased defense spending and reinforcing military partnerships abroad. In 2025, the Pentagon is seeking nearly $7 billion for hypersonic weapons research alone. Public anxiety about losing global dominance plays directly into this budgetary momentum and fosters deeper alignment with key regional allies like Japan, Australia, and the Philippines. China's hypersonic missile capabilities are forcing the world to rethink naval warfare and power projection. While the claim of wiping out all U.S. carriers in 20 minutes may be dramatic, it reflects a growing reality. Beijing is rapidly closing the military gap. This isn't just about weapons. It's about influence, deterrence, and rewriting the rules of conflict in the Pacific. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.